Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's Word we're going to consider for this celebration of the baptism of our Lord is the prophecy from Isaiah, beginning of chapter 43. Your friends in Christ Jesus. In the midst of this really cold weather, let's stop and imagine that it's summer. Imagine that you're at a fair, a county fair, or the state fair. Can you feel it? You're walking around in short sleeves and short pants. You got the sun beating down on you. You got the sticky cotton candy that you can eat. The bright lights from all the rides going around you. In a county fair like that, one of the traditional places to stop was the Hall of Mirrors. A place where you could go in and look at yourself in all these different mirrors. There'd be the mirror that you look at yourself and you turn out to be really tall and skinny. Or another one where you end up being really short and squat. Or another one that you look at yourself and your body is just bending all over the place. I like that picture because I think it, it, it says something about how we, how we look at ourselves. Because we look at ourselves in all different ways. Sometimes we think about ourselves and we can just think about our imperfections. We just think about how bad we are to the point where we may lose our self-esteem. And at other times we might think of ourselves and we start to think about how good we are. We ignore the sins, ignore the imperfections, and then we walk around all proud. Oh, look at how great I am. All these distorted views that we might have. The Bible has been compared to a mirror. In two ways. God's law is a mirror that shows us what we really look like spiritually on our own. It shows us our sins. It shows us our imperfections. It shows us how we have violated God's will and we deserve to be punished. But then there's the mirror of the gospel. The message of God's word which shows us how we look to God. It shows us how we look as God looks upon us through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And in God's sight, we are perfect. No matter what you've done, God looks upon you as if you were absolutely holy, as if you had never done anything wrong. And today, God wants to assure you that this is what you really do look like to Him. Stop getting caught up in your own ideas about how good you are or how bad you are. Instead, look at yourself through God's eyes. In this wonderful lesson from Isaiah, the Lord says, You are precious and honored in my sight. And then the Lord says, I love you. And the Lord also says, You are mine. In this celebration of the baptism of Jesus, let's remember that in our baptism, the Lord says, You are mine. Isaiah Isaiah had been, in his book, pointing out the sins of the people of Israel. He had talked about how they had violated God's commands. They had been selfish. They had exploited their fellow Israelites. And even spiritually, they were turning from God to the point where they were worshiping false gods. They deserved to be punished. And in fact, the people were going to be disciplined. They were going to be taken away, taken captive from their land. And then we get to chapter 43, which says, But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel. The Lord says, You are mine. He says that, first of all, because He created you. You are a special creation of God. You are not just the end result of a million years of evolutionary processes from one species to another. No, God made this world, just like He said. He is Almighty. He could very well make this world in six days by the power of His Word, just a few thousand years ago. He made the light. He made the air that we breathe. He made the land and the vegetation. He made all the stars out there. He made the birds and the fish. Then He made the land animals. And when it was all done, then He made the first people, Adam and Eve, our first parents. But God didn't stop there. He not only created all these things, He then continued to preserve us and provide for us. And that includes coming today and being in your life. God gave Adam and Eve the gift of children and then grandchildren and on right down until you were conceived as God led to you being born here upon this earth. You 
are special because the Lord God has made you right now, today, in our own lives. Some people think that they aren't very special. Some people think that they aren't worth a whole lot. They might view themselves as being sort of like an old beaten up car or a beaten up house. Sometimes maybe that is how you feel. Sometimes maybe that is how you think about yourself too. But you know, even an old beaten up house or car can have a lot of value, depending upon who owns it. Elvis Presley, he would have been 80 years old this past week. Back in 1957, he bought a 13-acre farm and a big house on it for $90,000 that today is probably the second most valuable house in our country, Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee, worth hundreds of millions of dollars if it could be sold. A few years ago, a dirty old pair of sneakers was sold for $4,000 because they had belonged to Michael Jordan. Yes, something that belongs to somebody prominent, somebody famous, that thing has inherent value. And you belong to God. In fact, the Lord God doesn't just own you, the Lord God made you. And that makes you valuable. It makes you just as valuable as any other person upon this earth. But there's another reason why you are valuable. God says further, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. God not only created you, he redeemed you. Redeem means to buy something. God paid a price for you. And now he says, you are mine. In Isaiah's day, God would buy the whole nation of Judah back for himself. As I said, the people would turn away from God. And Isaiah prophesied that they, the, the nation of Judah, were going to be removed. They would be deported. The Babylonians would attack and remove thousands of their people, take them away to another land with the intention that they would just be dispersed. They'd just intermarry. They'd be forgotten as a people. But God said, no, I am going to bring you back. Something truly amazing, unprecedented would happen. The Jewish people, after being deported, after being removed for 70 years, would actually be brought back to their own life, their own land. That God said, I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God would have the Persian Empire overthrow the Babylonian Empire. And in the process, they would also attack others, the Egyptians and their neighbors, the people of Cush and Seba. And that's why Isaiah can say that, that God was making a payment by having these other people conquered in order to win back his people. Pay the price so that the Jews would again be restored to their own land. But the thing is, all of this was just foreshadowing a much greater redemption, a much greater payment. Because every one of us has sinned against the Lord God. We may not have stooped down to false idols like the Israelites did, but there are times where we put other things before God. Times where we concentrate more on our money or our possessions rather than God. Times where we want to trust a doctor or a famous person. Times where we want to elevate some other individuals most important rather than keeping God most important here in our lives. There are times where we act selfishly each and every day. We are sinners and we deserve to be punished. And we live with that. We live with the pain, we live with the guilt, we live with the fear, we live with the knowledge that we deserve to be punished forevermore. But God redeemed us. The Lord God made a payment for you. He did it by sending His Son here, having Him come to this earth in order to pay the price for everything that you have ever done wrong. What an amazing payment this was. The Almighty God comes to this earth and He Himself goes to the cross so that His innocent suffering and death would secure you once again for the Lord God, make you His child. I think that we see that so clearly in the Gospel for today, where Jesus is baptized. So John the Baptist is out there at the Jordan River. He's baptizing people. First of all, telling them they have to repent. They have to admit their sins, turn from their sinful ways. And then he removes their sins, washes their sins away. The forgiveness of sins, that's what God was actually giving there at, at that Jordan River. And he's doing this one person after another, and then along comes Jesus. The one person who did not need to be baptized. The one person who had absolutely nothing to repent of because he hadn't done anything wrong. And yet he was there. 
because he had come to this earth to be our substitute. He had come here to take your place as if he were the worst of sinners right there going to be baptized. And then he would leave to begin his public ministry that would culminate at his death at Mount Calvary and his rising from the dead. You can be certain that you belong to God because now you have this incredible value. It's not just that God made you. God has also redeemed you from your sin. You know, even something like Graceland Mansion or Michael Jordan's shoes, even they would say wouldn't really have value unless there was somebody who actually was willing to pay for them. Well, God was willing to pay for you. God was willing to shed his own blood in order to win you for eternal life. Therefore, you are valued above all other things. And you can be sure of that if you were united with Jesus in holy baptism. Our second lesson today from Paul's letter to Titus said that God saved us through the washing of baptism so that we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. You are a child of God, and you have an inheritance in heaven waiting for you. When you leave this earth, you have another home, and it's going to be so much better than grace life. It's going to be so wonderful as we are there with all of God's people praising our God and Savior eternally. And this is something that you can be certain of now, because in baptism, God washed your sins away. And God says, you are my child. I love you. Just as that voice from heaven said that with Jesus, you are my son whom I love, with you I'm well pleased. So God now says it about you. You are my child. With you, I am well pleased. And this means that we have all sorts of blessings from God, even today. Let me read once again from, from Isaiah. The Lord said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. They will, when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now some people think, okay, if I'm a Christian, nothing bad should happen to me, right? That's not what he said. He said, when you walk through the waters, when you walk through the fires. In other words, you're going to have hard times. You're going to have troubles. Sometimes it might literally be waters, like we've had floods here in, in Finley. Plenty of other problems, pains and sorrows that we have to face. But the Lord will be with you. He will protect you. He will get you through until he takes you to your heavenly home. Think about how he did that, literally. It, with the whole nation of Israel, when they were in Egypt, and God parted the Red Sea, they walked through the waters. Think about how he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, thrown into a fiery furnace, yet not one hair on their heads was singed. Yes, the Lord has that power to protect you today, and he will be with you, making sure that you are preserved in the faith until he brings you to your true heavenly home. Isaiah quotes the Lord saying, You are precious and honored in my sight. Here's how Martin Luther kind of expanded on those words of, of, of the Lord God. You are precious. Where? In my eyes. Who says that? The world does not say this. No, to the contrary. Even in your own eyes, you seem cast off. But in my eyes, you are a noble jewel and emerald. Although in supreme trials, you seem to be nothing in your own eyes and are condemned, in my eyes, you are glorious. Therefore, you may be vile in your own eyes, in the eyes of the world, even in those of your brothers. Fear not. In my eyes, I regard you as a precious jewel. There are moments in life when a parent feels especially proud of a child. You feel that when there's that end of the year program and your child gets called up to receive some special honor there at school. You feel that at the graduation, if you see your child walking across the stage to receive that, receive that diploma. You see that if your child gets the opportunity to come before the Lord's altar and pledge the wonderful promise of marriage to a loving spouse. You, you sit back there going through those events and you just have to beam and smile because this is your child. And it's not just selfishness. You're, you're thanking God that God was with that child but also that God even used you to help that child grow up to be that way. The Lord God looks upon you, and he beams with pleasure. 
The Lord God looks upon you as his child. He, because he says, you are mine. The Lord God said that when you were baptized. The Lord God says it again every time you confess your sins and he tells you that you are forgiven. He's saying it again. You are mine. And the Lord God will say it on the last day when we stand before him there with all of his angels around him. There's no gospel song called When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. And this picture is all of us standing before Jesus and the names there in the book of life are read one after another. And in the song, God is sitting there and, and beaming, beaming with joy. You see all of his people there being brought into heavenly glory. Beaming with joy that each one of us is there because he created us and because he redeemed us. And because he called us to faith, he called us by name. The Lord said it, and the Lord says it again. You are mine, so that we may trust him and live in confidence. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses our understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue by singing from the song. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Page 9. <laughs> Please be seated. 